I have to say, it's a pretty cute look, but I, I don't know if I could do a whole video with this on and be taken seriously. Hey there, everyone. It's Christy. I hope you're doing well. I am recovering from a cold while I vacation here in the States. I haven't had a chance to make a lot of videos because I've been ill, but there is one thing that was pretty fast and easy to get out of the way that has been in the back of my mind, and I wanted to put these different pieces together for a while. So this is a short video just to document for posterity what I noticed about Sargon of Akkad, Carl Benjamin, declaring his professional victimhood. Those of you who follow YouTube drama probably know that uh, Sargon of Akkad has a lot of contempt for SJWs, people who advocate for social justice. Um, he has a lot of contempt for their tactics. Um, he has a lot of contempt for them as people. Okay, well, I think that the intersection between atheism and social justice is the same as the intersection between social justice and any other community that can possibly exist. It is an outright car crash and everyone hates it, and they want you to go away. The, the reason that social justice warriors are considered just tyrants of the internet is because that's how they act. So I found it kind of interesting recently when he was trying to sell his, uh, when he failed to sell his Gamergate 2.0 idea on the kill stream, he also gave us a bit of an insight into the way that he operates politically, which seems incredibly disingenuous. So I wanted to put these pieces together. Now, Sargon often says that he doesn't like white supremacists, he opposes them, but we know that he's been on record giving them political advice. He was reminded of this during the kill stream. Are you trolling us right now? Like, what is this? Like, this I, I don't reminds know. me of that Millennial trolling? Woes conversation you had where you're like, dude, Millennial Woes, you should act like an SJW. That's a super smart thing. Yeah. This I, like I think like an SJW shit. would get the white nationalists' legitimacy. <laughs> oh, these are some big-brained ideas. It's I just, undeniably true. Not only does he give advice to the white supremacists to use tactics that he supposedly hates, he also, during the same stream, admitted adopting these tactics for himself. And this is how they end up kind of influencing and like washing over an institution. And that's part of it. You know, another part of it is they have activists that go and speak to these people directly, like Anita Sarkeesian. You know, she ends up going to, well, she Intel. I mean, she's she got like the UN, you know, she, like how the fuck did she get there? Well, I know how she got there now. You know, I've actually been doing it myself. This is, this is how this works. And you can make this a remarkably, um, efficient and effective thing if you have a kind of victim narrative and if you have a particular like group that is opposed to you politically who you can demonstrate have interactions with you it's very very easy to get people already opposed to them to be sympathetic to your side now you might have noticed that Carl's point here was not that he is raising legitimate concerns or giving examples of oppression, rather he is using and constructing a narrative in order to advance his interests. And it's not one that's necessarily one he believes, it's one that he thinks is politically expedient. And if you listen to his BBC interview, you can see him using the tactics that he says he despises right here. I am the vulnerable minority. I am the person who's not being served by the current media landscape. The media landscape are serving all manner of people who say all manner of ridiculous things along various identitarian categories, decrying all white people as racist, all men as sexist, the very nature of being female to be oppression. I am the minority that has had to build up a large presence on the internet and break into the mainstream using it. I think it's useful just to put these pieces of information together to show that when Sargon of Akkad claims that he's speaking on behalf of people who are marginalized, he's not really doing it to help a marginalized group. Rather, he's adopting a political narrative to advance an agenda. And it's one that is based on division and making himself to be a victim. Um, so there you go. Carl Benjamin, professional victim. That was pretty much all I wanted to say, you guys. I hope you tune in for our election night special on Tuesday night. We're going to be starting at 8 o'clock p.m. on the East Coast when the polls close and going, we hope, for at least four or five hours through the California, the left coast, Oregon, uh, Washington State, all those polls closing as well. So until next time, you guys, I've been Christy. You've been awesome. Thanks for t stopping by. Thanks for your time and attention. And we'll see each other again really soon. Bye from Wisconsin.